I'm Ryan and I'd like to welcome you to another painting tutorial. Today I'm covering how to paint fur, feathers, birds. So like any other painting, I go in with a thin base. It has no detail at all. If anything, it's just going in the direction of the stroke that I want later. And it's just to give me a general idea and make sure my proportions and everything's right before I really put time into a little area. So I don't do like one area really nice, one area really nice, and then just have them not fit together in the end. This is just a really good way to make sure you're not going to have to backtrace your steps too frequently, right? After that, after all of this is done, I'm going to move in with this brush. Because I cut it to have multiple tips. Why did I do that? Because painting fur, feathers, anything, requires a ton of strokes. And if you did it with this one brush, if you painted every single stroke, you'd go crazy. There's not, ain't nobody got time for that, right? So I cut this, I'm sure you can buy similar things or use similar appliances or just cut a brush. Um, but when I use this, it's great because when I do the stroke, it makes four or five, maybe more lines and it reduces time really efficiently. Now, I'm painting a fairly young owl, and it's not fully developed, it's not all feathers, it's still in that kind of funny, furry phase birds go through, right? And because of that, I'm doing most of this as fur. But I will add some slight feathers, like above the eye, or just to show that they're developing. But for the most part, this smaller bird will be done in fur. Now if you two are working with a feathered, furred kind of animal, you're lucky, like me, because it doesn't really have many colors. So it's not hard to distinguish the areas and where it blends together. It's pretty obvious, right? And it makes this job easy. And then that's where I go into the little brush. The brush no one likes using. But what I do with this, it's not too much because we covered most of it with our other brush. I go in with a dark color, perhaps a black or a dark brown in this case, and I go in from the sides and I do a couple of strokes. Not too many because you don't want it to overwhelm it, but going against the direction of my previous strokes. And what this does, it separates the color, it adds another layer, but it does leave your darkest color on top, which generally looks a little bit awkward. So once that's all done, I will go back to my bigger brush, lightest color, and I'll slightly overlap it, just to make sure the brightest color does come forth the most. Now, the eyes are pretty detailed, right? And what I like to do, I do use a small brush for this, I like to add a heavy shine for what's reflecting directly off of the eye, if there is anything. And I make that a solid white. And I kind of like to feather it off into the eye on the edges. Not much, but just enough. And then on the other side, I like to do a full feathered, very light gray. And what this does, it just makes it a little bit more round, and I do it all in the shape of the eye just to ensure it has a little bit of depth in it because a full black eye generally, unless done extremely well, doesn't look that good. Looks kind of creepy, I guess. Not that these eyes don't look insanely creepy. For the record, I do redo them, but it's in the same way I just kind of turn them so it doesn't look like it's going to kill you in the middle of the night. Sometimes I add a little bit too much white, or I make it a little too rich in the brown, and I find a really good, easy way to combat this little issue is take the other color, so say I put on too much white and I want it to be a little more brown. I'll take brown, I'll put it on my brush, and I will really water down my brush with the paint on it. So when I put it on the painting, over the top of the white. It acts as a wash and not an actual paint. It's kind of like tie-dyeing a shirt. You're not going to lose the original graphic, but you're going to have this color soaked into it. 
and it can be really nice because it can create really uh, good green. Now, I found when I'm painting like this, it's going to look terrible for the majority of the time, and that's just something you have to accept and work through. Yeah, diligence, not giving up, that's all stuff you just have to drill into your head while you do this, right? Uh, you stop halfway, you might be stopping halfway to a masterpiece, you don't know. And even if it does turn out poorly and you're not happy with it, at least A, you tried, B, you probably learned a ton, and you know what not to do next time. And it's thorough, you went the whole nine yards, you know. It's not, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should have, it's definite. And so no matter what, you're gonna end up with a great lesson or a great painting. Either way, it, you're becoming a stronger painter. So persistence, you know, don't give up. Now, I'm kind of strange when I paint. I like to mix the paint on the canvas. So I'll take brown, I'll put it on the canvas, I'll put, take white, I'll put it on the canvas, and I'll work with them together. But because everything is so detailed and fine here, I find you can't really do that. So with animals, if that's what you are used to doing, I recommend actually blending it on the palette like we're supposed to, right? Um, yeah. Now we've been dedicating a lot of time and effort into making everything look cool, really pristine and neat and tidy and making sure that the detail is all fine and perfect, but we should remember that this is a wild animal and it probably doesn't actually look like that. So something I found I like to do is go in and be really messy in one or two to three areas. And I do this just so it looks a little more natural and it doesn't look like a model of something. So anyway, after that, I just re-layered things. I finished it off, painted a background, basically just did more of what I was doing, and this is what I ended up with. I hope this has been helpful to you and that you are able to create what you like. Subscribe for more, I have more videos on my channel. I hope you have a lovely day and take care.